she's yeah, she's just a complete. I actually heard the term the other week, a hate entrepreneur. So it's people that now have made their brands on hating on shit or being hated on. Like, hello, not- hello, <laughs> hello. I mean, They're have you spoken? Hating. Like, do you know me? Do you are you are we together here for five years? Like. Yeah. Apparently that is my brand. Hello. Someone said to me, yeah, they're a hate entrepreneur. I was like, oh, I love that. That is you, Yanti oh. and Franco. So yeah, it's either you hate on shit to get attention and you become a hate entrepreneur and you make a ton of money from it, or you don't care and you become hated on that and you also make a ton one. of money from it. So there you go. My so, hate is truly, uh, truly, truly, truly organic. Like when I don't like you or I have a, a blind eye to you, that is a problem with other things I've done recently. Um, I hate the fake. Th- listen, nothing upsets me more. This is why I think most podcasts suck. You have a minute. I hate. <laughs> yes, so tryhards. Yeah. I fucking hate tryhards. So when we turn on this microphone and we have other podcasts that we hear come in our eardrums, I hate a tryhard. I hate a tryhard. I hate someone that is trying to be sexually explicit, trying to be funny. So when you're just organic, like I think you could say. I'm a hatrepreneur, whatever the fuck you just called it. But none of it is like, let me get a click. Let me get a, let me think of my one liner. This is all natural. I turn on this microphone, ain't nothing prepared here. <laughs> it's it's so, real. Yeah, this is all real. This is this is the brand here. And I think that's why people like it. But um, you don't like her. Okay, you know, she can do everything. And uh, oh, look, my model of choice is Rinna. But Bethany, you did good for your first time well, at the radio, girl. I'll say this. I did see something is Bryn did like some video like promoting that her mom was in Paris for fashion week. And that was cute. I thought Bryn looked nice. And I thought she did a good job supporting her mom. So there you go. And sometimes, you know, people I dislike, their kids are really lovely. They do a good job parenting, which always says to me, you know what? There are some redeemable qualities. And actually, I don't dislike Bethany. I just think she's full of shit. And she really is not this great businesswoman she presents herself to be. And I think she's a ship without a rudder when it comes to this stuff. And now, actually, I do think I know her title, which is hate entrepreneur. I don't think there's any strategy. I think it's just as long as people are talking about me, good or bad, that is my brand. I think that's it. And she has no intention of helping reality TV people. But you and I were talking about a recent article that basically says reality TV and and these networks are going to be dead in five years. So that is what this article said. It said, um... Uh, it said that it is going to be dead. It said that producers, um, it's so it's basically saying it's over. It was a guy who's been a longtime unscripted producer. Unscripted just means reality television. He did a video that's kind of gone viral on Instagram talking about how the business is not coming back. The reality TV industry is in chaos and people are in despair. Producers explain why with Andy Denart and it for unscripted television is brutal, bleak, and on life support, with shows impossible to sell due to a culture of fear. That's how reality show critic and insider Andy Denhart is describing how producers are feeling behind the scenes. Anyway, it goes on, but it doesn't look good for the future of reality. Now, you know, I mean, can is- you imagine if we had a whole new, like, hot influx of, like, scripted shows? And that was like, remember the... Remember oh, Lost, you- remember Devious Maids and Desperate Housewives and Melrose? Like, what scandal? What happened to sitting around the water cooler and talking about all these shows? I love scripted TV. I love it. I don't well, you watch could be it getting- all the time. You could be getting more of it, but how it ties into Bravo and what we do is this video goes on to say that anything that is even somewhat like performing, like again, you know, the days of like 4 million, 5 million people watching a reality show are gone. So that's why some of your staples, RHOM, Dubai, they're going to stick around because if they even get a minimal amount of numbers, and you were talking about the ratings recently on Salt Lake, these reality networks do not, they're going to drag out these um, programs, what they have that kind of work as long as possible to kind of milk the because there's People nothing else in, in the there's churner. nothing else. There's nothing else. And they can't, um, the guy goes on to say that the executives now at Bravo, at uh, TLC, my friends at TLC, you never get fired for saying no. You mm-hmm. only get fired for saying yes. 
So I don't you, understand what that means. It's the, yeah, I guess it was the cancel culture. He's saying that that's what's doing it. People are scared to say yes. They're scared to no, speak it's out. It's the money. Oh. So if you oh. if are an executive David Yontif and you're like, all right, cool. We're going to bet $2 million on the uh, secret lives of Mormon wives. Turns out it only gets 50,000 down, you know, because they always juice the numbers. They always, oh, oh, mm-hmm. 400,000 people. Well, probably Jeez. it's more like, Maybe 150,000, which is insane because you and I get like double that. It, it, it's crazy. Mm-hmm. But anyhow, mm-hmm. they, uh, if you said yes to that project and now the network is out, not only 2 million, but the marketing, bit, all. but if you had axed that from the beginning, you're like, hell no, we've already got these shows. Look at my friends at TLC bringing back. I love a mama's boy, thousand pound best friends. I don't think these shows perform particularly well, but they do well enough that they're not going to say yes to new things where they're going to bring in a whole bunch of new people and new production teams and a new marketing team. Sister Wives? Yeah, off the charts ratings. But that's a rarity. Okay, first of all, now that makes sense when you put it like that about yes and no. Um, You don't get fired for saying no. It's easy to pass on it. Interesting. Um, Well, the good news is then for the fans of Dubai with 200,000 and Salt Lake, hey, your shows are going to stick around, guys. Watch what happens. So this is good news. Um, We'll be here forever, Sarah and I. So don't you worry about us. Um, I'm okay either way. I mean, if the whole thing wants, if the whole Bravo network shut down, I'm okay. Uh, We'll uh, think about what we're going to do, guys. We're going to talk about um, other reality shows. We'll talk about scripted. We're all in this together. As I said it on the Patreon, we're a partnership or um, God help me and God help you, Sarah. These people, these people that are listening to us, if the whole thing goes away, they might just want us to fucking start at the goddamn beginning. They might want you to put on season one, episode one of New Jersey. And then they might want you to put on season one, episode one of uh, New York with that Alex McCord. And we might go down the list. Um, Okay. Can we do some rapid fire stories? Because I really want to know your opinion. What did you make of Candace Dillard Bassett giving a a recent interview saying the real reason she left RHOP was she felt that she had some real enemies within in the production team that really didn't have her best interest at heart. She actually said she had a round of IVF that failed when that whole rumor was coming out about Chris Bassett and the other woman, which turned out to be completely untrue. So she said the moment she found out she was pregnant, you know, there was some talk of maybe she could stay. There was a lot in the works, but she just said, ultimately, she really felt like um, they had it out for her a little bit and she was not coming back. Thoughts? It's not good news. It's not good news. Um... I really, look, I think that Candy Burris quit. I think there was maybe a conversation too, where no one was that upset, although they love her, but her salary was high. Uh, I got bad news for Candace. Uh, I made it very clear when it happened that I thought 